morning well actually it's afternoon now but hey I don't care it feels like morning anyway I was gonna write something but it's too long so I'm just gonna gobble it instead hmm sounds nice well depends who's doing the gobbling yes anyway so I managed to drag myself away from um, I, I've got to roll my cigarettes being a cancer addict I like to ensure that I'm gonna have my cancer so anyway I'm um, I dragged myself away from Facebook Jesus it's hard it's fucking hard even when no one's talking to me it's still hard because there's so much to do on Facebook anyway I dragged myself out I had a task a couple of tasks in fact I took uh, a couple of bags of clothing because you know I'm about to be homeless again so uh, I took a couple of bags of clothing to uh, give them away to charity as I always do but uh, on the way down I met the um, what do you call them a fella <laughs> anyway um, I asked him you know where the nearest one was and he, he reminded me that there's a little shop round the corner and it buys clothing okay so I took it round took my bags round with my little fire trap top that I bought from a charity shop which is very nice but uh, too tight it was a woman's <laughs> well never mind anyway they took my clothes off me and they gave me two pounds now my maths isn't too good but considering I probably didn't spend a great deal of money on those clothes and some of them were given to me some of them I bought in charity shops you know for more money than I got but I'm still in profit I can now afford a nice latte when I get to town so off to town I trot I, believe me I'm not trotting I'm just ambling slowly as usual um, went to find out about a job now it's not quite what I thought it was but it's a job and that's why this piece is going to be called Catch 23 because unfortunately I find myself in a position of being in a catch 22 situation only I've added one <sighs> because I've got brain ache so that makes it a catch 23 plus that number adds up to 5 and I like 5 better than 4 so anyway I goes in and there's a Polish girl on the desk who'd let me in and I asked her about the job and she told me something totally different from what I asked her so I said does there happen to be an English speaker and she said yes it's me I said okay so I tried to re-explain my question which she finally understood and told me and it's not what I thought it was but you know it's a job and I do need a job but unfortunately not only do I need a job I need somewhere to live as well now unfortunately getting social housing in this country as a single man is very difficult um, unless you've got heroin addiction or alcohol addiction you don't get a great deal of assistance uh, you have to bid it's an auction you don't go on a list it's an auction pure capitalist bullshit oh I love it anyway I will apply for the job anyway I have no choice but to do so so I thought, well, what shall I do now? Shall I go home? Shall I do nothing? And frankly, I needed to see some women. So I went off to town, ambled down. But, oh, I forgot to tell you the first person I met. Lovely guy. He comes out of a Polish shop and he's complaining to himself. And I happened to walk by, as I always do. And he said, have you got a light, mate? And I went, yeah, sure, no problem. Got my lighter out, by which point he's already told me that they wouldn't serve him beer because he's drunk, which he is, well drunk. And uh, it looks like a bit of a monster, but then everyone here does anyway, so it's hard to tell which ones aren't. So uh, he says to me, you know, thanks, whatever, they won't give me a beer. I said, well, you know, go somewhere else, get yourself a beer. Like, he said, yeah, he said, do I seem drunk to you? <laughs> <laughs> so you don't look too drunk, but you sure sound drunk. Anyway, he said, yeah, yeah, it's my medication. I said, is it really? He said, yeah, I'm on such and such. Really, what's that then? Antipsychotic medicine, which is always a good conversation opener. I always, I actually turned away and went. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I had to go to the job thing and I went, oh, I've got to go now. Bye. 
So it, it fucking, I saw him later when I came out, but I wasn't saying hello again. <laughs> you know, I've got enough psychosis of me on without his to deal with as well. So, ambles into town. I'm, you know, checking out this, that, and the other as you do. You can't help myself, can I? You know, eyeballing, seeing who looks back. You know, bit of uh, intimate eye contact. Nothing wrong with that. There's no sin in it. I'm not married. I'm not even attached. So the weather's grey. I can manifest weather. I don't have to do a rain dance. I just go out with my face and it gets cloudy and rains. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, right, gonna go and have a nice little coffee at my favourite little pub, where the spoons were all the Neanderthals hang out. I went in, got myself a coffee off the big black lad that works behind there, but he's fine, he's a nice lad. And uh, I, he said, do you want anything else? And I said, well, if I could afford some food, I'd have some food. And he said, try the deli counter if you've got three quid. Great. So I'm just about to give him three quid. And I said, is there a vegetarian option? He said, no, it's pork and beef. And I went, well, no, nah, just give me the coffee. And uh, he didn't charge me like full price. So I said, you know, is that? That's a small coffee, is it? He said, no, no, full price. So I don't know how, but in our capitalist society, the price of a full latte has actually gone down from £1.50 to £1.29. I nearly fell over in absolute shock and horror. Anyway, took my coffee outside, sat down. There's a big fella there. This guy walks out behind me. <laughs> I'd not even seen him. <laughs> He's got... He comes to me and he said, can I bum a fag? Well, I've only brought three out. I've already smelt one. I said, I've only got two left, but go on. Because I bummed one off someone yesterday, so I owed one to the universe. And I gave him his cigarette and I smoked mine. There's always solutions. I'll go and buy myself some more once I've got some money. I'm rich. So, he stood up with a pint. Next thing he says to me is, He's come outside because he sweats a lot. Really? So I said to him, what's that tattoo on your head? He says, which one? I said, that one there. So he showed me and he's got tattoos and scars all over his head. <laughs> he's a proper rumbugger, this one. He's a big lad. He's got hands like sledgehammers. Tattooed, all of them. I can see he's been inside many times. And of course he's got his life stories to tell me. He tells me he's a Capricorn. I hadn't even asked. Which... I like to know actually what sign someone is. It helps me a great deal to understand their their journey. Anyway, he gives me his life story. He's telling me about the time he was seven and hit by a car after he'd stolen a bicycle with his brother. I didn't realise he was seven when he was telling me this, but he was. They both stole these bikes. Only his had a puncture. So he gets to these traffic lights and he decides he won't wait for the traffic lights, but he won't ride over, he'll push it. So he's pushing it and a car ripped him at high speed. He said, it knocked me from here to that second lamp post, mate. Right, okay, he said, so there's all these people stood around me. You always wake up in a crowd, don't you? Anyway, um, he took him to hospital. He had a fractured skull, at least four fractured ribs, broken arm. He said, but I really had a nice time in hospital. I know the feeling. I was in hospital as a six or seven year old and it was pretty chilled out time. That's another time. That's another story. Anyway, so we're chatting away and he's alright. He's not a bad lad. Well, fucking hell he is, but, you know, you can't judge a person. They have a life. They have a path. And he knew it. And he's alright. He's not bad. Me and him got on really nicely. I wouldn't say he's a sweetie exactly, but he offered me no aggression whatsoever and we had a really good laugh. Anyway, I said bye, shook his hand. I like to shake a hand strongly. I hate a limp handshake, I hate it. It's disrespectful. Now he's got big fucking hands and some, some people like to crush your hands. I've only got little things. But anyway, we shook hands and we shook hands with equal force and equal respect because even though I haven't got tattoos all over my face he could see that there's something in me that resembles what he is as well anyway I went off I stood about no I didn't stand about I, I went and saw a, this nice little Suzuki 125 beige 
and I spoke to the lad whose bike it was for quite a while and my parting line was how much you know is it for you to take your test because he's not taken it yet and he said so much you know I've done my CBT which is a year and it will cost me um, I don't know 540 quid or something so I, says, I told him about Andy my mate when he took his test it was a one part test one day and I said to him how much do you think I, my mate paid he said I don't know it's got to be about 500 quid I said no uh, no, seventeen and a half quid, mate. And he went, "What?" <laughs> I said, "I'm a, a bit older than I look, mate." Anyway, I left him. We were, we were sweet. I'm having a good day, you know. I'm chilly. Anyway, uh, I went and stood. I'm having a fag, and I'm thinking, "Do I really want to go to fucking Tesco again?" I mean, <sighs> you know, this is my social life, Tesco. It's I might as well shoot myself, man. I would if I had a gun. I would have done it a long time ago if I had a gun, but hey, I haven't got a gun. Uh, <laughs> so I think, right, I'm in town, I'll go to uh, Asda instead. Okay. So I went in Asda and I met about 20 different people and was chatting to them. <laughs> Just about anyone. I was like, this woman came up while I'm looking for the butties and uh, she's on the phone and she says, yeah, yeah, keep me posted. Puts her phone down and I said, uh, can you keep me posted as well? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I said to this other woman, uh, excuse me, could you tell me where your cheap shelf is, love? And she looked at me and went, I don't work here. <laughs> <laughs> so I put my hand on her arm and said, I'm really sorry if I could read what it said on your chest, like. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she was fine, we had a laugh. And I went off, I got myself a basket, I bought me tobacco. I went and got some food, this, that and the other. But they, they've got them in Asda with these like poles saying, Ask me. I'd never seen this before. So I went over to this woman that's holding one of these and I went straight up to her and said, Excuse me, excuse me. She went, Yeah. I said, Can I have a date then? <laughs> and she went, Oh. I was a bit disappointed, really. It says, ask me, for God's sake. Anyway, I went off, giggling my head off. And uh, I went to get some cheese, and I couldn't actually read what it said. I could see the price, but I couldn't see how many grams it was. So I've got this cheese in me, and there's no one around to ask, and I'm like, I'm starting to panic. <laughs> I want this cheese, and I want it at two pounds. It's a big block of cheese, which will last about three seconds in this house, because they're like fucking cheese monsters, the bastards. Anyway... This guy eventually turned up, who didn't work there, I just said, could you please help me? <laughs> and he told me, yeah, it's 350 grams, so I bought my two pound block of cheese, went round the shop, got some more bits, looking at the ladies, I'd already clocked one, and she clocked me, and we clocked each other again, and I nearly said something to her, but I couldn't be asked. she wasn't fit enough. <laughs> anyway, me neither, but hey. I got some bits and I got some bobs and I said hello to a couple of kids, babies, you know, I like to ruffle their hair. I can't help myself. It's, there's nothing, nothing naughty about it. It's purely, I like babies. Anyway, I got me stuff and I went out and I thought, right, I'll go and eat a sandwich. I'll go and find a nice little place to sit because the weather's brightening up a bit. It's a bit sunny. I saw this old fella and I thought I'd go and sit with him. And I thought, nah, there's not enough traffic round here. So anyway, I went past him and I said, hello, afternoon. And he was quite happy that someone had actually bothered to say afternoon to him. And I was happy to say it too. Anyway, I went off, found a little place. Already had a chat with a bloke in the shop about MP3 players and cheap bicycles. Had a laugh. Anyway, uh Went and sat down, eating my butter, checking the traffic. Rolls a fag. Has a fag. But I can see, I'm stood up as I'm rolling a fag, and there's a nice looking little blonde there. So I'm looking at her and thinking, hmm, she's very nice, but she's way too young for me. So I'm not really looking too hard, you know. She clocks me, and I clock her, but that's it. But just beyond her, I can see these two lovely little dogs. I'm thinking, oh. 
I'll just come in this way because I need to see them dogs. They're gonna, you know, they give me a huge amount of energy, dogs. So, um, I want some of that energy. Anyway, I'm thinking, oh, hurry up, hurry up. So I'm rolling my cigarette. I've got my cigarette. <laughs> I've got my cigarette in my mouth, but I'm not gonna light it because I'm gonna go to the dogs. So I goes off to the dogs, and his missus had turned up, and I think, oh, they're gonna run away. But quick, no, I put my bag down on the wall. I said, excuse me, can I see your dogs? She said, yeah, 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 but watch that one because she'll bite you. I said, nah, they never bite me. 